Welcome to another Colors Abroad. And uh, it's been a while uh, in trying to uh, listen to as much as possible and report to you uh, music you, for the most part, a lot of you may not have heard of and some that you have. Um, a lot I'll be doing, uh, I'll be covering the next few shows will be uh, downloaded uh, material from Bandcamp and other places. So uh, I won't be doing the usual hold up the CD or vinyl, uh, but we'll be getting back to that soon. There's a lot of that to do as well. So without further ado, um, I'm going to do most of these uh, alphabetical because that was the easiest way to take notes. Uh, first one I'm going to do is Ever Ship the Uncrowned King, Act 1. Uh, it's a United States based band. This is a 2021 release. Uh, Ever Ship is uh, primarily Shane Atkinson, a Nashville, Tennessee based composer and multi instrumentalist, engineer, producer. He was in a 90s band called Curious Fools. Now, uh, from research I've, I've done, uh, they, Curious Fools kept getting uh, dropped by their labels. They finally folded um, without releasing any music. Shane Atkinson then went into the software industry. He returned to music. Uh, Evership's first two albums, released in 2016 and 2018, uh, feature Shane Atkinson, and he's been apparently working on these for about 10 years, previous to the first 2016 release. So the Uncrowned King um, features his brother James Atkinson on guitars, John Rose on guitars, Ben Young on bass, and singer Bo West, who sometimes sounds uncannily like Steve Walsh, one of the uh, Kansas singers. And I guess imitation is the best form of flattery here, as it sounds quite much like a crossover between 70s Prime, yes, and Kansas, and a little sticks, and that ain't bad. Um, so, uh, unwieldy title, The Uncrowned King, Act 1, and by the way, I couldn't tell you what it was about. It's obviously a concept album, I assume about a king. Songs are good. Um, so that's Evership. Uh, there's quite a few people I saw that liked it. Um, I'd like to see where they go with this going forward. Next is Felina, Una Seconda Strana Sensione. Uh, it's an Italian band, and uh, the songs are sung in Italian, which is a nice change of pace from a lot of new Italian bands that uh, have been singing all in English. Uh, the band's name, Felina, means moth. And this band is in the best RPI uh, tradition. Rock progressive Italiano, Italian progressive rock. Uh, it made me think of Banco, Le Orme. This too is a concept album, running well over an hour and 14 tracks. Um, the, the title in the uh, the Italian title translates to a second strange sensation in English. Now this one's pretty wild. This is uh, the story of Mr. F, who has a complex personality. Don't you love how the Italian uh, musicians and composers and new bands come up with this wild, crazy stuff? Um, I won't go into details about the band members, but it's not bad for a band that started out in 2003, whose first album was released in 2007. Um, I have to say Felina may be more on the hard rock spectrum than Prague, but that being said, much of the, of the, uh, of the uh, songs and the concept and the way they presented did remind me of Banco and Le Arme at their more hard rocking moments. It's good stuff, a surprise. Uh, there might be some metal type songs, but there, it's a lot of everything, isn't it? So that was Felina on Seconda Strana Sensazione. I hope I didn't murder that one. Next up is Estesis, The Awakening. This band's from France. 
Uh, the first song, Downstream, reminded me of Pink Floyd. Uh, all these songs are uh, sung in English, French band sung in English. Um, so we started off with a kind of Pink Floyd thing, first track or two, and then we definitely got into Stephen Wilson territory, the solo Stephen Wilson material. Stephen Wilson from Porcupine Tree and Solo the Raven. Um, some of the songs are quite long. There's only six tracks on here, and uh, some of them are over 16 minutes long. So it's definitely, they're going for something here. That being said, the album is just short of an hour. In fact, although the band states they are, they are influenced by 70s prog, to me this sounds very much like a Stephen Wilson solo album, or influenced very much like by Stephen Wilson solo material. Uh, especially Hand Cannot Erase, 2015. Punctuated by uh, some really interesting guitar work that reminded me very much of uh, David Gilmore from Pink Floyd. So there's a lot going on here. Also, it, has, it reminded me of uh, Airbag, Norwegian band. Those not familiar with Airbag, you should check uh, The Greatest Show on Earth and The Day at the Beach, two of the band's uh, five albums. So, it's Theseus, The Awakening from France, really good. They have a lot of influences, Floyd, Stephen Wilson. I, I, I give this one a recommendation, not a heavy one, but I think it's a band to watch. Uh, next, Fish on Friday, Black Rain, having nothing to do with <laughs> the Marillion singer. Uh, this is a band from Belgium. And uh, all the material here, material here is sung in English. They were formed in 2009, Fish on Friday. This is their fifth album. Uh, which is interesting, there's uh, one, two, four members in the band, including Frank Van Bogiet who uh, sings, guitars and keyboards, and, and others. Nick Bates, the talented uh, everyman, uh, sings as well, plays bass, of course, and the Chapman stick. And Lula Beggs is also on this. So I, 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 I tried to find out, so did Nick Beggs join Fish on Friday for just this album, or is he now a member of the band? So that something to deal with for those of the hardcore prog community. This, is, this album certainly has an 80s pop sense in it. Um, and it might be due to the presence of Nick Biggs. You know, uh, he was a member of Kajagugu and the Kim Wilde band and Iona and so many. He played, i seen him play with Steve Hackett. Uh, he's also supported Stephen Wilson on a couple of tours. So Nick Biggs is quite the man about town. Uh, oh, he's also in Life Science with John Young, which is uh, a band everyone likes. I do as well. It's a good band, Life Science. And he's a member of the Mute Guards, Mute Gods with Marco Miniman. Let's get back to Black Rain, the Fish on Friday album. That's 11 songs, and I, I kind of came up to the conclusion, sort of like Prague light, progressive rock light, uh, with a dose of popular music from the 80s and 90s, uh, all hummable, listenable tunes, but is it progressive rock? I'll leave it at that. And that was Fish on Friday, because we all know we have to have our fish on Friday. <laughs> Flying Caravan. I just want to break even. It's the name of the album. They're uh, a uh, band from Spain. This was released 2021. All the, uh, the vocals are in English. Zaga Plata sings. Antonio Valente on guitars. Pedro Molina bass. Juan Sanchez keyboards. Luis Mas percussion. Plus musicians on saxophone, flute. Uh, they released two CDs previous to I Just Want to Break Even on Paella. Paella Records, a little in joke there, I guess. Uh, uh, the first uh, album came out in 2016, so it made three albums in about five years. 
Uh, Antonio Valente was also in the Spanish Prague band New Men. So what does the Flying Caravan sound like? Very good symphonic sound with good strings, excellent vocals from Plata, and uh, pretty impressive guitar and synthesizer work. Uh, the singer reminded me of uh, Leslie Hunt from District 97, maybe less of a pl uh, power rock voice. And actually, it was I was thinking as the, the record went on, I'm like, wow, there's some of that Burt Bacharach 60s pop sounding there in, in her voice too. I think that's probably in, influence on the, on the band. A touch of that Spanish flavor too, in the rhythms and instrumentation. Um, it has two tracks on disc two, which uh, disc two is 36 minutes, which is longer than some whole entire running time of albums. Fairy Tale for Grown Ups uh, is, is, is a, a song I, I quite like a lot. Uh, really, really good stuff. And do I hear an influence of Peter Frampton's guitar style? in uh, Antonio Valente's uh, playing, that's not a bad thing at all. So it's a band to watch. Next I have Galad, G-A-L-A-A-D. And this album I'm gonna be discussing is Freighter, F-R-A-T, the number three and the letter R. And uh, in English, Freighter, means I believe Final One. This was released in 2019. This is a Swiss band. All the vocals are sung in French with occasional English. All right, so Galad, uh, can we imagine an angry Charles Aznavour fronting a hard rock prog hybrid band? That's what this sounded like to me. Uh, the Smith Band formed in 1988, disbanded 10 years later, reformed again in 2016. It really delivers an aggressive sound, sometimes pounding sound, but tuneful. And not dissimilar musically from, uh, I would say, uh, some Marillion, past and present. Uh, and some of the harder, heavier moments have a certain Gaelic flavor. Not garlic, but Gaelic. So I wasn't where I wasn't overwhelmed by Galad. I, I I think they're a band that has to, well they've been around for a while, but they it just sounded like a big soup cauldron of styles and influences. And um, having not heard anything else by them, I'm not sure if that is this album or is that the way Galad sounds. Interesting, bad glass kites is next. Uh, Glass Kites 2. It's a Canadian band. It's from 2021. Uh, not to be confused with Glass Hammer. Entirely different band. This is a very pleasant, easy on the ears record. Uh, as I listened to it, it kind of reminded me of middle of the road jazz, fusion. Very popular in the uh, 70s and early 80s. But layers and layers of keyboards and synthesizers. I know quite a few people that were taken with uh, glass kites, uh, but personally, there's nothing extraordinary here going on. Again, sound like prog light. Uh, played by very competent musicians. No knock on that. Uh, there just seeming seems to be an explosion of new bands out there, uh, falling into the progressive rock category. And uh, although it was pleasant. I, I thought it wasn't essential listening. So maybe I need to listen to more glass kites. Inner Prospect Campus 2. This is an Italian band, 2021, all vocals sung in English. Uh, Alessandro Di Benedetti, keyboards, vocals, and drums, is also in the band Man Crayon and is a member of the ongoing international. Uh, group, The Collective. Uh, he's a big devotee of Genesis keyboardist Tony Banks, and you can certainly hear Tony Banks' influence on this Inner Prospect album called Canvas 2. He's done a Di Benedetti, 
Di Benedetti has done about 10 solo albums under the name Inner Prospect since 2014. Think of, talk about prolific. And uh, his first one was called Dreaming Tony Banks, so right there. Canvas Chew, uh, however, I found it to meander all over the place. You have jazz fusion, um, Mahavishnu Orchestra, Jeff Beck, Jan Hammer Group, keyboard, guitar and play. Very good stuff. Um, but just far from the uh, Italian music that many of us uh, are used to from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. But, you know, he's got his own sound, his own style as Inner Prospect. <clears throat> to me, it sounded like uh, a lot of ideas, again, and very, well, very, very talented. Uh, and there, there are some uh, guitar players on here, Rafael Paccia, Federico Tetti, and Carmine, Carmine Capasso, those are guest guitar players, they're very good players. So, not a central prog, uh, but uh, a band to check out every now and then. Finally, <clears throat> Jana Draka, Where the Journey Begins. Jana, J-A-N-A, Draka, D-R-A-K-A, Where the Journey Begins, 2019. Another Italian band, all these lyrics are sung, sung in English. It's a long album, nearly an hour. Uh, there are 13 tracks here, so none of them are excessively long. It's well, well recorded <clears throat> with uh, certain nods to classical music, <clears throat> pardon me, <clears throat> and popular RPI bands of the 70s and 80s. Uh, there's also a four woman vocal choir on two tracks. And things take a turn to harder rock territory and spooky sounds with the appropriately titled Salem and uh, Limbo, another tune that's kind of dark goth going on there. While the vocals are in English and they're fine, I, I probably would prefer them in their uh, native Italian language, which would probably, I felt, better suit this music. Again, it's another concept album, this one about madness and redemption of sorts. But that's an RPI thing, isn't it? So, I just blow out a lot of uh, recent releases I've been listening to in Progressive Rock. Uh, be back shortly with even more. Have a great day.